Okay, before we get into today's assignment, this is 4.6. I need to make some points, okay? I want you to find that simple product, okay? 5 times 2x plus 3. Well, you distribute, here's your plus, you distribute 5x to 2x and 5x to 3. So this would have x to the second with a coefficient of 10. This would have x with 15. So it would be 10x squared plus 15x. Nothing can combine. In today's assignment, you will need to get from here back to here. It's a process known as factoring. Finding the product and factoring are inverse operations with polynomials. 2x times x minus 6. Okay. So negative 2 times x, negative 2x is your distribu distribu distributing, so you'll times it by x and you'll times it by negative 6. So that would be x to the second with a negative 2 coefficient. If you put a 1 there, it's still negative 2. This would be x with 12. So it would be negative 2x squared plus 12x. Now, before I get into the equations we're going to solve, this is the equations you have solved previously. These are linear equations because they just have one solution for each value. Okay. We all know x on this side, you got a times negative 3 plus 6. You get the 6 out of there. Makes 9 divided by negative 3. x is negative 3. So to get a value of 15 out of that expression, there's one and only one answer. Well, that changes here today. Okay. I'm going to organize my work. You have to solve the equation for each vari for each for the variable. Now, in this equation, the x is actually to a power, it's to the first power. If the first power is the highest power I have, there's one answer. That's what makes it a linear equation. And those pretty well are cookie cutters throughout the process. You know, if you got more than one x, you combine them. But this is different. Now the game changes. 8x to the power of 2 plus 24x equals 0. This is what is known as a quadratic equation when you have x to the second. Quadratic equations have two answers. Okay, There are two solutions. There are two solutions for x that can make that value equal to 0. Now, in this here today, when you have to solve a quadratic equation, you want to apply an a in front of your x squared. And then if you have x, you apply a b. Now, 0 doesn't count as a term, so there's no constant term. This is just an a, b quadratic equation, okay? Eventually, we'll do a, b, c, okay? Sometimes we'll do a, c, but today we're just, there's just going to be an a and a b. You don't label the 0, okay? This is how you solve an AB quadratic equation. You find what's known as the, I'm going to make a box, and you find what's known as the GCF. Okay. To organize a GCF, you're going to rewrite that with a GCF factored out of the expression. So you're going to make a blank and then a parentheses. You will put equal zero outside the box. Here we need to find our GCF. First off, in AB, you need to have your zero. Okay. Some of these later on, you're not going to have your zero, okay? So you'll have to rewrite that. Now, here's what we do first. We look at the coefficients 8 and 24. I've provided a multiplication table. If you find the further, the greatest factor here were 8 and 24. So look at 8's row. 24 is also there. So 8's the greatest common factor. Now, you also have x to the second and x on both of them. You take the x of the smaller degree, which would just be x. Okay. Now, the third thing you check for in your GCF, if your a is negative, your GCF has to be negative. 
but the A isn't negative, so my GCF is not negative. Now here's what I've put in the parentheses. I go up and divide each of these terms by the GCF, which is 8x. Okay, 8 divided by 8 we know is 1. x second divided by x, okay? Here's what that means. It means you got x times x divided by x. Well, those cancel, and we have just x. Then, 24 divided by 8 is 3, so plus 3. And x divided by x. Well, those cancel, and then we won't have an x on the 3. Okay. Now, here's how we solve it. Okay. I would parenthesize your GCF. I have done what's called factoring the expression. I have done a process known as factoring. Okay. It is the opposite process of finding the product. Okay. See, now you get this. You have to get back to here. Here's why you do this. This is called F1 factor 1. This is called F2. Each one of those factors are set equal to 0. So 8 times x equals 0. 1x plus 3 equals 0. Now I have, I have rewritten this in two factors, both of which are linear. means I just solve them like normal. So 0 is the first solution. 1x equals negative 3. You can divide by 1 or just drop it. It'd be negative 3. Those are your two solutions. That's what we're doing today. Okay, my next one, negative 4x to the second power minus 12x equals 0. So again, I know there are two possible solutions that make the value of that equal to 0. So in AB quadratic equation, we simply make our GCF box, and that's going to be all I have to do. Now, if there's other things besides A and B, that's a different process, okay? Okay, 4 and 12, if you look at your multiplication table, if you look in the 4th row, 12 is there as well, okay? So 4 would be the GCF. Now, underline them both. They each have X's. I take the X of the smaller degree, which would be X to the first power, but we just write that as X. Now your A is negative, so guess what? The GCF I want negative. Then I go up and divide by negative 4x. So negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1. x second divided by x. That's x times x divided by x. I'm left with x. Then make that plus negative. Negative 12 divided by negative 4 is positive 3. How do you divide x by x? They go away. We don't have anything then. Okay, now I'm ready to roll. F1 would be negative 4x, F2 is 1x plus 3. This is just the tip of the iceberg, okay? In the next lesson, we will solve ABC. There is no C today. 0 does not count as a term. Divide by negative 4, that's 0. Then you minus 3 to get negative 3. Ditch the 1. 0 and negative 3 are the two possible solutions for x. Okay, next up, negative 12x to the second plus 20x equals 0. So we have two answers. You need to label your A, B. If you don't label that, as these get all mixed up, you're going to be in trouble later on. To solve an A, B, we just simply factor out the GCF. Just rewriting this side in factored form. Okay, 12 and 20. Well, 12, wouldn't be 12 this time. 12's in 6's row, but 20's not. 12's in 4's row, and so is 20, so we want to do 4. We need to take x, and the a is negative, so the GCF is negative. That's going to be your factor 1. Now, to find the factor 2, you go divide, because this is like the opposite of multiplying. So negative 12 divided by negative 4 is 3. How do you divide x squared by x? Well, you have x, okay? 20 divided by negative 4 is negative 5, so minus 5 cancels, and then 5 is a constant. Okay, that is now my f2. So negative 4x could equal 0. 3x minus 5 could equal 0. 
Now, I know what some of you are thinking. You're like, aren't you always getting zero for your first one? Yeah, and in AB you will because they both are multiplied by X. And if X is zero, I'll have zero. ABC, it will be a different story because you'll have that C without the X. Okay, you can do write this one of three ways. Don't be writing the repeating decimal. Go second PRB. You can write one and two thirds, or you can just keep it five over three. I don't care if it's a mixed number or improper. Just don't. I'm fine with decimals, just not those ones that like repeat forever. Okay, my next problem. We have twenty x to the second plus thirty x equals zero. A, B. By the way, on an A, B, make sure you have zero lined up on the other side. That's going to be a problem on the next page. Okay, 20 and 30. 30 is not in 20's row. What's the next higher up? 20's in 10's row, so it's 30. Okay, so it'd be 10 with X. Okay, we we'll underline those. Underline your A and B. There's no C. If there's a C, you'd underline that too, but there's not. Okay, A is A is positive. It is not negative. Okay, so it would just be 10x. Okay, cross those x's out. You know those cancel. They don't here, but they will here. 2x plus 3. Don't put x on the 3. The x's have been canceled. A lot of people put 2x plus 3x. No, okay? So f1, f2. So 10 times x could equal 0, or 2 times x plus 3 could equal 0. So if I divide by 10, I get 0. Then I subtract 3 from each side, I get negative 3. Divide by 2. Now, you can write that as one, negative 1 1.5, that's fine, okay? You can go second PRB equals, or you, heck, you can just leave it negative 3 over 2. I don't care the form it's written in, just make sure it's an exact form. The repeating decimal, you can cut it. Okay, my next problem, Get a little bit of a game changer here. answers. No, I wrote that wrong, my bad. 5x squared equals 35x. That's A, that's B, but where's the zero? Don't make that box till you have zero on this side, okay? So you subtract 35x and then you'll have zero. Now, where do I put the 35x? Now, there's no B over there to subtract from, so just put it after the A. Okay. So you'd have 5x squared minus 35x equals 0. Now I have my 0 and I have A and B. So you had to do a little bit of adjusting at the beginning. Now you do your GCF. Okay, so 5 and 35 are both in the fifth row. There's 5, there's 35. So 5 would be the GCF. They both contain x, so I take the smallest x out. You can't take x second out, because you can't divide x by x the second. You can divide x second by x, but not the other way around. A is positive, so my GCF is positive. Okay, out with that. Don't not with that, though. That's 1. x second divided by x would be x, 1x, minus or plus negative 7. Okay, so that's F1, and that's F2. So either 5 times X could equal 0, or 1 times that 1, or X minus 7 could equal 0. Okay, so 0 is my first solution. Then I add 7. X would equal 7. You can put the 1 there, but it's really obsolete. Okay, next one, we got 6x squared minus 4x equals 3x squared plus 8x. Watch out for this. There's two answers. If it's got x squared, it's an A. If it has x, it's a B. If 
it has x squared, it's an A. It has x, it's a B. That's why it's just so important you label. Well, I need 0 on this side if all I have is A's and B's. So I subtract 3x squared. And there's an A over there where I can subtract. Okay, right there. Then I minus 8x. And there's a B over there I can subtract from. That's why that AB from the beginning is so important. Okay, 3x second. That's a negative 4 minus an 8, which would be negative 12. You can just write minus 12x equals 0. Now we're good. We have A and B equals 0. So basically, to make a long story short, if you have A and B, you make sure you label them. And if that's all you have are A's and B's, you have to make sure you're equal to 0 before you do the GCF. Okay, 3 and 12 or would be 3x. A is positive, so 3, my GCF is positive. Now I go up and divide by 3x. Okay, that's 1 with x minus 4. Now I'm good to go, f1, f2. So 3x could equal 0, 1x minus 4 could equal 0. So I divide by 3. And I get 0. Then I add 4. x equals 4. Okay, now we're going to do some story problems. Okay, new type. You're going to apply what you're doing to these problems, but you got to know how to set them up. A golf ball is hit from, a, from the ground with a velocity of 96 feet per second. After how many seconds does it land on the ground? So we're finding the number of seconds. So I'm going to arrange this like I normally do it to you. So you're not finding the maximum, so you can't just draw the big giant parabola in the middle. Okay, You're not finding the maximum. Feet and seconds. The feet per second rate is 96, but times x. But we are not going to make our table, here's why, because it's not linear. It goes up and comes down. Okay, it would not be a line. Okay, so the table would be—I'd never be able to figure it out because it's not a constant rate. Okay, so I'm going to draw my parabola here. Now, here's what I'm going to label. You want to label right there where it starts, the number of feet you start at, and then the number of. Okay, now it was hit from the ground, so you start at zero feet, okay? Now, where's it lined up at? It lands on the ground, okay? So that's zero feet. You want to mark where it starts, where it ends. If you know where it ends, you'll know where it starts, but if, you, if they give you the information for where it lands, you mark that. Okay, now this is gravity, the gravity equation. So that's blank x to the second plus blank x, plus blank, put equals y behind it, instead of in front. So this is the gravity term, that will be negative 16. This is your velocity, that will be your per. Well, the per is 96. This is your starting height, okay? The initial height. Well, it start, that's your initial height, it's zero, so you can just take that out. And y is where you ended at, okay, zero feet. So you're going to replace your y with starting height, ending height. Okay, so I do put zero here, because I, I want the zero over there. So I have 96x to the second, plus 96x equals zero, and now it's just like a problem I just got done solving, okay? You have a and b, you're equal to zero, that's good. Set up your GCF. Okay, 16, look in the 16th row, is 96 there? Sure it is, so 16 is a GCF. I would need X to go with that, and if A is negative, my GCF is negative. That's a rule. So those cancel, it's going to be 1, and then X, or just X, and that's going to be negative 6. And we have our F1, F2. Negative 16x equals 0, 1x minus 6 equals 0, so I divide by negative 16, 
I get 0 for my first answer. Add 6, add 6. So 6 for the second. Here's what you do with the 0 and the 6. The 0 is 0 feet, 0 seconds. Well, duh. That's because it hasn't launched yet. And this would be 6 seconds. So the answer is 6. Okay. Okay, let's do another one like it. A missile is shot into shot from the ground, shot close to the ground, from the ground, with a velocity of 128 feet per second. How many seconds does it hit its ground target? So seconds equals. Okay, so you have seconds and feet. X is seconds, Y is feet per feet per second which is 128 times x. Now, I don't want to make the table because it's not a linear equation because what goes up comes back down. So that would be the path that the graph follows instead of the line. Okay, so probably you want to mark your starting and ending points if you know them. The feet, it starts, the feet, it ends. Well, it starts at zero and it's going to end at zero. So again, gravity, you line up something with x squared plus something with x plus something equals y. Gravity's here, I know that's negative 16. This is the velocity, so feet per second, it's up there, 128. Now this is your starting height. The constant is, but it started at 0, so we don't need to add 0. Okay, We just delete it. And then y is where the height was to end with, so 0 feet. So we'll replace y with 0. We want that 0. So we have negative 16x to the second plus 128x equals 0. So the, the expression has a value of 0, but there's two possibilities. Again, you have a, you got b equal to 0. That's good. So GCF is ready. 16 and 128, you look in the 16th row, and 128's there, okay, so we're going to go 16, we're going to need x, and we will need a negative because the a is negative, if the a is negative, your GCF's negative, then I divide, it's going to be 1x or x, 128 divided by negative 16 is negative 7, so minus 7. So those are your two factors, f1, f2. So negative 16x could equal 0, 1x minus 7 equals 0. Divide by negative 16 and I get 0. Add 7 and divide by 1, it's just 7. So 0 seconds and then 7 seconds, it's back to 0 feet, so 7 seconds. All right, now, assignment time. you got seven to do with one story problem, okay? Watch, when you get to five and six, you got A and B, but you need them all on one side. So you'd have to subtract 30X. So it'll be 30X squared minus 30X equals zero. A, B, A, B. You need to subtract the A and the B out of here so you have zero, and you have an A and a B to put it with over there, 